Welcome to Wire Guild. This tutorial I've named a cradle moon pendant. Really because what I've done is I've created like a cradle and then I've set a gemstone within there. Now I used a circular cabochon. It doesn't have to be a moonstone, it could be anything. Uh, some uh, one millimeter, sorry, 1.6 millimeter or 14 gauge round wire. Some 0.8 millimeter or 20 gauge round wire. And I've also used a little bit of half round. I've used 18 gauge half round. Now, if you don't have any 18 gauge half round, that's fine. Just use a little bit extra of the 0.8 or the 20 gauge. So this is my round uh, cabochon that I have. As you can see, it's got a nice flash of colour in there with it being a, a moonstone. But it doesn't have to be a moonstone used. It could be anything. And I've got all my little bits and pieces of wire. I've got a length of 1.6 and I've cut myself about 10 inches. And I have three lengths of the 0.8 or 20 gauge. And I've got a little bit of half round. Now, I've also got some 1 mil cut, but I'm not sure yet whether I'll use it. Sometimes I add it in for a bit of extra decoration. Uh, but I don't think I'm actually going to use it with this stone. It's, I want to see as much as possible. So taking one end of my 1.6mm or my 14 gauge and my round nose pliers, like I said, I've got about 12 inches here. If you want yours to be particularly on it, do that. Grip that with the round nose pliers and bend. This is quite difficult because it's a heavy gauge wire. Don't worry about that, just make it do. I've gone all the way around and I've touched I'm putting my pliers back into the loop so the pliers go through and then I'm not gripping I'm just using this as a pressure that I can push against so that you get this nice bend back in again and all the way back I really like that as a loop it looks like the end of a, a shepherd's crook or something like that and I do like it as a finishing end so I'm just going to straighten that up because I twisted it a bit when I was bending so using flat face pliers I just rearrange it so then I'm going to shape this piece. I've got this as my stop. So that's going to be the open area. But I want it to curve around my stone. I want the stone to sort of nestle in the bottom. Now, if you don't want to use um, such heavy wire, you could use something thinner. I just prefer the strength that this really heavy gauge wire gives. So I can't quite do this with my fingers. It would be lumpy and bumpy and not particularly great. So what have I got? I've got a pen here. Let's little tiny bit at the side, just easing it around to form a curve. I'm going to keep going. I don't think this is quite going to work. No, it's not giving me the, the tightness of the curve that I really want. So I'll have a fiddle with my fingers. The idea is to get something as organic as possible. Because it's such a heavy gauge, you can push it like this and tweak it and it will allow you to do it. If you had a much finer gauge wire, say you were trying to do this out of one mil, you'd have to definitely shape it around something uh, because it just wouldn't play. It wouldn't allow you to do this. It would, it would you know, it's kind of the shape I want. Yeah. Maybe like that. You can decide at this point exactly where you want your bale to be. I want my bale to be above this area, but I'm not completely satisfied with that curve. It's a little bit lumpy. So I'm just going to go around the head of my pliers. I don't have a jam jar hander, otherwise I would have used a jam jar. Now that's a lot too small, but if I just gently open this out, see where it bent there at the end? I'm just easing that bit where it wasn't quite circular. Now then, let's just ease that out there. Now my stone can sit nicely in the bottom and my bale's going to go at this point on the top. So a flat edge plier onto the wire and then I'm going to bend straight upwards like that just straighten that bit because of course it still wants to curve around 
there we go this is going to be our framework as you can see it's quite a bit bigger than the stone i'm not going for something that's tight around the stone i want it to be much bigger now this is going to be creating our bale so i need round nose pliers not snips i don't know why i picked those up and i'm going to just ease that forward a little and then bend it back all the way back and that will then create what our uh, chain whatever is going to go through thong and i've bent that wire forwards now if i wanted i could cut that off at that point and just use it as a bell but i quite like to use this heavy strong wire as part of our design so over the top with my pliers to hold it sturdy and then just gently wrap it around this wire i'm gonna have to use a pair of pliers it's a bit too strong for the fingers and bring that close to the wire and wrap around again as soon as i get a little bit, bit down the frame i can move i'm going to leave my pliers for this cut with my fingers over the top find a flat place go over the top with your pliers that will hold everything in shape and then bring this around there we go just protecting it there and let's go around and I'm getting it tighter now. I don't want this to go down too far. If it goes down too far, it's going to interfere with uh, where I'm going to put my stone in. And I don't want that to happen. So I think that might be enough. So I'm just going to trim this end off using my snips. These are uh, ultra flush cuts, so I get a nice flat edge when they cut off. I don't get a little pointed bit. Now, using my pliers, I'm going to place one jaw of the plier over the wire that I've wrapped around. That's where it's resting on the back. And the front one is easing the end in. If you notice, it's just on that wrapped wire that I'm putting the force. It doesn't go onto the frame originally as it came around. So a little play with this bail, because you don't want it to dig into your chest when you're wearing it. Right, so we've got my lovely shape. And there we go, and I can pop my stone in there. I could put it at the top if I wanted, or in there, or at the side, or in the middle. It really doesn't matter. And this is where your own sort of design and personality and things comes through, and you can do whatever you want. So I've taken myself a short piece of half round wire, and I'm going to put a nice sharp bend in it. Like I say, if you don't have any half round, just use a piece of, of lighter gauge round wire. And I am binding my three lengths of 0.8 or 20 gauge round wire together in the middle. Now, how much you have here depends very much on how much fanciness, if you like, you want on your pendant. I've got about 15 inches, which I suppose is about 40 centimetres ish. Um, because I want quite a bit of design and it's a decent size round stone. I want to make sure that it's safe and everything. It's not going anywhere. So I've wrapped my half round wire, flat side inwards, dome side outwards. And I've wrapped it round about four or five times. And that will hold my wires neatly and together. It's harder to do this with round wire than it is with square, but we will manage. Now, I need to bring my wires around this stone so that it fits tight, very, very tightly. We want the wires to mirror the shape of the stone. So I'm just going to ease this. Do you know what? I think my hammer's the same size as this. Would you look at that? Right, so I can use my hammer and I can go around the hammer to shape my wires into the correct shape of the stone making those wires cross at the top making sure that the area at the bottom that I bound is also shaped because sometimes that wants to try and stay flat and does that fit yes it does 
There was a tip on the Facebook page by one of our members that suggested that if you use a piece of um, like blue tack um, that for sticking up posters and things, that that holds it as well on the surface. So where the wires cross at the top, I am gripping them in the pliers. And then what I will do is I'm going to bend this wire upwards, straight up. There we go. Make sure that's right. That's fitting in neatly. And then the same with the other side. I've got a little gap, but when I bring that in tight, it tightens up around the stone, which is the way I want it to be. Ease those wires straight. And the same on the other side. Stopping them from twisting. They do like to twist when they're round wires. Now when I bring these together, I can do that with my pliers. What I'm aiming for is two rows of three wires bound together. It's easier to deal with. It looks neater than having like a mush of just six wires higgledy piggledy. But it is one of the harder things to do. You've got to be quite gentle while you're doing it. Some half round wire again. And I put a sharp bend in that, putting it over the wires and wrapping around to hold them tight. I don't want too many wraps at this point because if I get too many, I'm going to have quite a long, um, like a stalk, if you like, on the end. It's going to look like a magnifying glass instead of looking like a circle that's just been held. So wrap that round the other way and trim it off and press it down. So there's only probably three wraps there, not many at all. Enough to hold the wires neat, but not too much that it's going to, you know, make an odd shape. I go to use my round nose pliers. I'm going to grip right at the edge of the binding, just on one of the wires. Come here and then twist my hand and it creates a little soft loop in the wire which will hold my stone neatly in place there so if I pop that in there in you go just bring these side wires up over the sides the wire at the back has formed uh, a platform for the stone to sit on so I need the top wire so I've just separated that out with my fingers Supporting it with my thumb on my left hand, using my round nose pliers, I bent that over the face. Same again. Just support that wire with the thumb on my left hand so it doesn't go right across the face of the stone. And press that down. Now that should be secure. I know it's not perfectly even. It really, really doesn't matter with this. If this was just going to be a pendant on its own without it going into the frame, I would have, you know, the, the uprights directly opposite that weaving at the bottom. And they're not, they're slightly off. But like I say, it doesn't matter. So I want my stone to fit in about there. And we're going to use the wires that we've got at the top as um, the holding wires, if you like. They're going to hold them onto the front. So I've taken the two wires that were at the back of my binding. And I want them to come as tightly over this wire as possible. So if I get my stone roughly into place where I want it, hold it with my left hand. I'm trying to make this go in a way that you can actually see what I'm doing. So the wires are there and I'm bending the stone over the top. Normally I would do that the other way around, but I wanted you to see how tight those wires are to the frame. And then I've gone round again, attaching our moonstone to the frame. Nice gentle curve. Let's have a nice curl. And let's see, where should we go next? Even though I'm making curls and I'm making swirls, all of it is designed to hold the stone in place. So I made a nice curl, but I'm coming back across the framework and I'm just going in to catch the wire. I'm going to put another curve and push my stone into place. 
So that's curving up and onto the stone. Then I'm going to go around, around the framework wire to catch that in place. This is sitting up slightly, so I'm going to push it in where I want it to be. And I'm going to take another two wires. So I separate this into the pair that's at the very top and the middle pair. So this is as it goes down through the wires. So the top one, let's take that around that loop there, which will just steady the top of the stone a little more. This is why they always turn out different, because every one you do will be slightly different. I've taken one wire here, and I am putting that wire, can you see that gap there that's at the side of the binding? I have gone through there, and I will pull that tight. Then I'm going to take the, come on, nice and tight, take the other wire and follow it. The reason I didn't do both together is it's often much easier to work one wire at a time. Especially when it isn't on something like a curl. If you've got a curl where you want both wires to lay together, you use both wires together. If we're fastening in place, it's often easier to use just one. So I've brought the wires back together and I'm gonna put another curl. And I'm hiding where I've joined to the stone with a little curl. And then take that back to the framework. And I think I'll just twist around the framework there. On the back, I will trim. Where's my snips? There they are. I'm going to trim the wires so that they're both the same length. Then I'm going to go round again, together, tightly together. It's finding a place where these wires will sit comfortably. You've already got two very thick twisted wires that are already starting a design. If you're not careful about where you put your wires, you may find that you've got ends sticking out or something like that. So just take into account the, the way the wires are twisted and try and tuck these wires so that there is nothing... Sorry, hang on a minute. Just get those even. There's nothing sharp and poking out. You may need to trim more than you thought you would at first. Trimming a little bit at a time is always better than just thinking, ah, you know what, I can just hack that piece of wire off. It'll be fine. You can never stick it back on again. So a little bit at a time. You can always take a little bit more off. We can't glue any more back on. So that's just going to push in to that it's not quite a gap, but it's um, an area where the two wires lay and it'll sit nicer there. Okay, so I have two more wires. I'm just pushing that stone down again. And shall we have a curl or shall we come up? If you come up like that, I could go around the other side of the stone. That will add more support to that top edge. Hang on a minute, let's put a, should we put a curl in it? I quite like curls. You can tell I like curls, can't you? Yeah, you see that curl will add just a little bit of extra oomph. Now if I take this wire, come here curl, I want you to sit on the top of the stone, and I take the wire sort of downwards so it's going around the back of the framework, that will put extra pressure to hold that curl neatly in place which in turn will hold the stone in place so let's have another curl there and underneath the framework yours are obviously going to look different you'll have a slightly different stone i'm going to go across the back let's go across the back and i'm going to put a curl on the back if you're going to go right across the back of the stone Put something of interest in there to look at. Then when people flip the piece over and look at the back, they don't think, oh, look, they just they just threw a wire across here. It looks like you've actually decided to make the back as interesting as the front. So I'm down to two little 
short ends so one at a time through that part of the frame and I can put that one through as well another reason for going one at a time is sometimes there's only enough room to get like one wire at a time through there we go so I'll pull that quite tight to the frame neatened it and then I can trim that off quite short and ease those ends over so those ends are actually going to be between the frame and the stone no way they can touch any part of skin um, my stone's in really secure now but I have two more wires I could just trim those off or I could go the other way I might go the other way with them and go up onto this yeah that's kind of nice Now, where shall I finish up? Let's go through that loop. And tighten that. I do an awful lot of looking at these type of pendants. It's to see if the balance is right. Have I got enough curls in one place? Have I got, you know, a nice balance of wire all over the piece is is there an area that needs a bit more you know should, should I come back down which in this case I'm doing I'm making more curls because that part of the stone there was a little bit naked you could see quite clearly the wires that were actually holding the stone in place but not much else and it just looked, when you're doing something that's like this, which is sort of Rococo, it, it, it's ornate and fancy and you've got lots of curls. If you have a piece of stone, which has just got the two wires on it, which are holding it in place, it's just a bit jarring to the eye when you look at it. You know there's something wrong, you're just not right sure what. So back to the frame, I've gone round the frame, I've taken one wire through and now I'm going to take the other one through I wanted to stay at the back of that curve though so I'll grab that there and then I think we'll trim that off okay I've trimmed it with sufficient length that when I curve those ends over they will be between the frame and the stone that we've put in there making sure that there's no sharp ends to um, catch anybody that's where's it so we're just about there. Obviously, if I wanted to use these thicker wires that I got, um, I could go over the top with another gauge of wire giving fanciness. But as you can see, I think I'm okay at that point. I will take this away. I'm going to fiddle with it a bit more, making sure that there. And I'm going to oxidise it. Um, lots of different oxidization products out there use whichever one you want rub it back and you will get something that looks like this I love this totally antiqued uh, the loop there now I've got some Viking weave which I've already darkened nice thick Viking weave just to show you how attractive this looks like that I love the lightness at the top that you get from having a frame and then the stone sort of nestled in the bottom. And it shows you another way of how to put a stone in. If you don't want to use a circular stone, don't use a circular stone. If you don't want that shape, cradle, make a different shape. But if you follow the other bits, oh, look, not quite as tight as so all. Always double check that everything is the way you want it to be. I've got one of my wires has moved probably when I was oxidising it. So I'm just going to take my round nose pliers and tighten that wire so it's actually going across the back of the stone holding it. It probably wouldn't have gone anywhere, but you never know. Especially when you sign, you have to make sure that they are totally secure. So this is our cradled moon pendant. Yours, I am sure, will be totally different and equally beautiful. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you so much and happy wrapping.